I've ridden my bike in a variety of different cycling events on all different kinds of terrain. And I've never once had to worry about its main components not being available when I need them to be. But what if that were to change? Let's say that there was a critical failure that was caused by me deciding to disconnect the brakes. Let's see what that would look like. All right, here we go. Well, that was unfortunate. Well, let's take a little bit of a deeper dive and think about what happened here. So on the surface, this sounds like a pretty straightforward technical issue. My brakes failed and that caused my bike to crash. And that's technically correct, but there's actually a little more going on here. Because you see, even if I hadn't disconnected the brakes, I really should have checked them first before I started riding my bike. And that's more like a process issue. And another thing to think about is, I'm the one that's at fault for my bike crashing because I'm the one that disconnected the brakes. I can't really go back to the vendor and say, hey, my bike stopped working because they actually did send me a working bike and then I was the one that modified it. And this is one of the things that we mean when we say that availability is a shared responsibility. You can apply a lot of these same concepts to your Salesforce architecture as well. All right, so what do we mean by availability when we talk about Salesforce architecture? Well, availability is a measure of the amount of time that your system is operational. And a key thing to remember is that this is different from uptime because there are definitely things that you can do that will make your specific org unavailable even though the rest of the Salesforce platform is available. And there are two key topics that we need to think about when it comes to availability. The first one is risk assessment. And this involves identifying the potential hazards that could affect the operation of your system and then listing them out and categorizing them based on severity and priority. And an important thing to keep in mind here is these risks are not always going to be technical. They can be related to people and underlying processes too. And next, we have failure mitigation, which involves determining how your maintenance and support teams will respond to issues when they do occur. Now, keep in mind, you're never going to be able to identify every potential issue that could happen that would make your system unavailable. But you can put together things like playbooks that have a general approach for how you're going to respond to issues and who needs to be involved. And you can also put together continuity plans that, that cover how your business is going to continue to function if your system does go down. And then lastly, depending on your industry, you might also want to build redundancies into your architecture so that you have backup systems that can take over if your main ones do fail. All right, so this was just a quick introduction into availability. You can read more about this topic in Salesforce Well Architected under Reliable. And when you look there, you'll find some specific patterns and anti-patterns that are related to availability. And you'll also find prescriptive guidance for how to do some of the things we talked about in this video. So make sure to check that out. And also make sure to wear a helmet when you ride your bike. If you thought this content was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. And we're looking forward to seeing you next time.